Welcome to Adventure Sphere. This channel is dedicated to missing people who are missing with a vehicle. In the process of creating this database, we are creating a volunteer sonar search and recovery dive team to search for the people who are featured on our channel. Our services are free of charge. We ask you to consider subscribing, watch your content, and help spread awareness of our endeavor. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can be reached by dialing 988 or 1-800-273-8255. Calls are free and confidential. Zygmunt Thomas Jerzoko, then 69, is missing from uh, Deland, Deland, Florida. His last date of contact was Friday, December 30th, 1983, when he was out seeing raking leaves uh, seen raking leaves outside his home. He apparently drove away in his truck without telling anyone. He owns a summer home in New York. Zygmunt drives a blue 1983 Ford Bronco with New York license plates 5023ARD. It is a brand new truck at the time. He disappeared at the end of the year 1983 and this Ford Bronco is 1983. Uh, the Valusa County Sheriff's Office is investigating. They can be reached at 386-254-1537. His case number is VP8312666. His birthday is May 22nd, 1914. At the time of this recording, he would be 108 years old today. He wears glasses and dentures. There's a couple different dates of death I have for him. One was February 4th, 1990, and the uh, year of death on his headstone is 1983. His burial site is at St. Mary Cemetery in Rome, New York. His daughter, Janet, was born in 1948. She passed away in 1970 at the age of 21 or 22. She is buried in St. Mary's Cemetery, as well as his wife, Sophie. Sophie lived from 1919 to 2006. She was about 86, 87 when she passed away. I do not know if Zygmunt's remains were recovered or not, so I need to call the cemetery to find out what this case might be resolved. We just don't know it yet. So Sophie was born in Cleveland, Ohio. She passed away in Rome, New York. So I'm thinking she might have sold the home in Florida after Zygmunt disappeared and then just moved up there to be closer to her other family members. Uh, their home in New York was in Lee Center. That address at that time was 9201 Wilkinson Road. But please do not bother the family. It is not... It's no longer owned by them, so they won't know what we're talking about if you're to knock on the door. Uh, their home in Florida, though, where I, I think he's most likely going to be around, was 2420 Ben Franklin Drive, Deland, Florida. There wasn't a weather tower in the vicinity of his home in Florida. The closest big town would be Orlando. That's about 40 miles southwest of his home. So the high in Orlando that day was 53 and the low was 39. I don't think the cold weather would have played a factor. There was also no precipitation. The sunrise was at 7.18 a.m. and it set at 5.40 p.m. I don't know what time he left, but I'm wondering. Uh, he wore glasses, so he might not have had the best night vision. Something to think about. So the places... Oh. Sorry, I do have some questions if any of his siblings, children have any ideas of the answers to these questions. Does he prefer to go out or stay home? Did he attend church in Florida? If so, where did he go? That might be a good resource for us. Does he prefer driving on the main roads or back roads? Um... At night. Did he have any calls put into AAA, his mechanic, or car insurance provider? And then was he conditioned to driving long distances? 
how long would it take for him to drive from Florida to New York in the summer? And then the place of his last verified financial transaction that might help us pin it down is December 30th. He might have gone to a liquor store maybe to get some champagne for the next day. Or if he was out raking leaves, he might have needed to go to a hardware store for something and maybe had some sort of a medical crisis while he was driving. Hard to say. So I'm going to share some places here next with my blessing so he can be reunited with his wife and daughter, regardless who higher powers work through. The description box has our email address if you'd like to share insight on any cold case, know someone missing with a vehicle and would like them featured on our channel and searched for, or to donate equipment. The video of Google Earth has a measurement from our current best starting location, which is just his home. And then it goes out about five miles. Uh, we focus on their last known location and then within five miles of their destination. So if we can find out if he went to a liquor store or a hardware store or perhaps to church, um, we could look around there as well. And then if he has any sentimental sites down there, that's, I think, the first place we'd want to look into. Um yeah, so accidents do tend to happen closer to home, so you want to keep that in mind, but I'm certainly willing to go out more than the five miles. So first, there's the Blue Peter Lake. Edstone Park also has a boat ramp there. Lake Bearsford, Blue Lake, Lake Hammock. There's North and South Lake Talmadge, Lake Bryan, Byron, sorry, Miller Lake, Lake Reeser, Spring Garden Lake, and Lake Diaz. If you'd like to help Zygmunt's family find him, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell to receive progress reports. I'll let the video play out here just a couple of minutes so you can see the entire search area if you're interested. If you see any areas I missed, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and remember that we love you. Thank you.